Hey there, folks, and aloha from Hawaii. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, over here on the big island for a week or so doing a trip with some folks and checking out some of the sites, making videos and such. And I'm kind of hunkered down right now in Hilo because we have a big storm that's coming across the island. It went through the other Hawaiian islands the last day or two, and now it's uh, parked over the big island. There's flash flood warnings, schools are closed. Um, but here in Hilo, it's actually, I mean, it's rainy on and off, but it's not that windy, so uh, not too bad right here. But I um, wanted to put together an update both on Hawaii and Iceland while well, I had a little bit of time here in the hotel. So thanks for joining me. Today is January 31st. It's about 9.30 a.m. here Hawaii time. And yeah, kind of a different thing, but there's, uh, it's interesting because I'm thinking about these two locations and their next phase of eruptive activity. Um, and it's interesting right now because here's the scene in Hawaii. Um, with the, the storm that's coming through this big strong cold front and all the moisture and the high winds. You can see a little bit of the snow up on Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea that they're getting. I was actually up on Mauna Kea yesterday and uh, the weather definitely got worse as I was up there and the, the clouds and the wind started really picking up. Um, but also if we look over at Iceland, they're also facing some pretty a pretty strong storm as well coming out of the, the southwest that's hitting uh, Iceland with a lot of what wet excuse me wind and um snow and rain and such amanda joe has been keeping me posted there but they're looking at a, a real rough weekend uh going forward so let's go ahead and get to this update uh, i've never done two together like this we'll see how this goes but let's start with uh, iceland it's dark there now but I, I pulled the webcam back a little bit what makes this weekend storm in iceland particularly um unsettling i suppose is the fact that with the the weather being so bad and travel conditions really bad you know if, if we were to have an eruption this weekend a we might not even see it on the webcams or it, you know might be somewhat muted by the weather conditions also the bad weather conditions is hampering our ability to uh, detect any sort of seismic signal um, i'm assuming the weather still doesn't affect the borehole so hopefully the borehole pressure changes are able to be measured because that might be the the real indicator that an eruption is coming forward but with the weather being just so atrocious there right now the last thing uh that the you know public responders and other folks need right now is, is an eruption on top of that and trying to manage safety and you know who knows where the eruption would be if we would need to evacuate people from the Blue Lagoon area, uh, Grindavik, places like that. So there's just qu quick webcam. Um, and then we do have a brand new Met Office update for today. So this is for the 31st. Uh, eruption increases in terms of the likelihood. Adverse weather may affect the sensitivity of the monitoring network. Their highlights are ground uplift and magma accumulation continues. Volume of magma is approaching the volume drop observed during the last event. So we're right in that threshold. We've kind of reached that minimum threshold that might be required for an eruption. Uh, likelihood is increasing. Period of heightened likelihood could last up to a month or longer. So you know, it doesn't have to be anytime soon. This might go on for several days or weeks. Uh, seismicity prior to the eruption might be minimal, again, due to two things. One, the storm and our ability to detect those earthquakes. And then also with the last eruption in November, we didn't see a whole lot of seismic activity, precursory seismic activity leading up to the eruption that just kind of happened um, you know, we had a conduit opened up. There wasn't just the there wasn't the need for the magma to break through rock in order for it to come to the surface, and that may be what we're we may see here as well. Um, and then, yeah, just bad weather and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, they talk a little bit about the weather here, and then they've got a little section on the period of increased likelihood of an eruption could last up to a month or longer. So what we have here is uh, a graph uh, since the last eruption. So this is just time on the x-axis, the volume of magma that's been accumulating. This is just the, the GPS plot we look at. So here's uh, the eruption on November 20th the deflation as the magma went to the surface. And then since that time, the, the fairly continuous and steady inflation that's been going on. So now we've reached more or less that that threshold. So this is sort of the, the lower boundary, what they're calling it here, uh, the minimum amount of magma volume in the subsurface needed for an eruption to be triggered. So will 
you know, will this continue to climb and maybe we see it, you know, several days or weeks from now, or will it be much sooner? That's, of course, the thing that no one knows right now. That's the, the unknown uh, quantity right now. <clears throat> then they have another fun little graph here looking at um, the last six eruptions and how many days it took once that th lower threshold was reached you know an estimated volume how many days until the eruption actually came you could see in august 22nd it took a a good month to get to uh, an eruption but in the november event it was only on day three once we reached that threshold uh, february 8th again a pretty low number so quite a range there anywhere from two days to 30 days um, and we're just now entering that threshold now uh, definitely, you know, something likely in February, I would say, since today is the last day of January. That seems um, like a pretty safe bet. So there's the latest from uh, the Met Office. As you'd expect, just not a lot with earthquakes right now. So there's the last 24-hour run there. Nothing uh, in the Svartsengi region here on the Sunuk liniment. There's no earthquakes really happening there. Looking at the past week or so, it looks like there's a few. Sorry for the using the old the different setup here the traveling setups a little different it looks like last week or so there's been maybe I don't know what like maybe a dozen or so earthquakes in this area um, the yellow dots are in orange and reds are a little bit more recent let's see if we can get that a little bit bigger yeah so there's been a few um, but probably nothing uh, in, indicative we're not seeing any clustering in space or time there um, but a few more than what we've seen in the past so we're definitely looking at a pressurized system and as more magma continues to intrude into this region getting closer to an eruption uh, we might see the earthquakes pick up a little bit but right now with the storm coming in that may not be so much the case uh, GPS for Iceland uh, we'll go to Svartsengi and look at the GPS data here and <clears throat> you can see similar to the the Met Office graph you know just steady uplift uh, we did have a little lull here interestingly uh, or what appears to look like a little bit of a lull the, the elevation dropped a little bit but now it's sort of picked back up again big error bars bad weather who knows how accurate that is um, but you can see that we're pretty cl close to that maximum elevation that we attained prior to the November 20th eruption. And that's what is uh, we're using primarily right now as an indicator for uh, possible eruption. So <clears throat> that's what I have so far in um, Iceland. Uh, Amanda Joe tells me that, you know, the, the roads are just horrendous. They're asking people to kind of stay inside, um, just, just ripping winds and snow and poor visibility, just really bad conditions there. So we'll hope that uh, the storm can quickly come and go and we don't have an eruption <laughs> at the same time we have the storm so hopefully we're still a good week or so out from any sort of eruption switching over to uh, Kilauea which is where I'm at here um, here's the summit view let's go ahead and update that from the USGS webcam uh, pretty socked in at the summit I'm hoping to head up there later today <clears throat> the rain's supposed to the storm's supposed to die down a little bit later um, and then I'll probably get out and about and as long as it's safe and the roads aren't flooded and, and such I think I think it's looking okay but they are getting some heavy rain I think it's sort of hit and miss exactly where you are on the island uh, but the other islands were hit pretty bad so scrolling back a bit you can see you know a little bit of action you know just degassing and steam coming out of the crater that's a little better view right there um, but again, we're between episodes, right? So the most recent episode was episode seven, and I'll show you some video of that. I think that was after my last update. And the update from the USGS, whoa, too big, um, is from yesterday. They haven't put out one yet today. I'm sure they will at some point here in the next few hours. Um, so we're paused right now. We're between eruptive episodes. We're post episode seven and I guess waiting for episode eight to begin, uh, but they do have a window, a new eruptive episode may begin with the next one to four days, and that's as of yesterday. So it could be anywhere between today and three or four days from now. So episode seven ended at about 1047 a.m. on January 28th after 16 hours. Um, this, of course, was the whole series that started on December 23rd. There's been seven episodes so far. 
The eruption may resume within the next one to four days based on current rates of summit inflation. And we'll look at the tilt meter data here in a second. Um, so summit observations. <clears> that <throat> so We had this episode seven that began. Um, they had both vents going initially, but then the uh, north vent shut down five minutes later after the, the south vent shut down. So that was the end of episode seven on the 28th. Uh, there's still glow, obviously, in that flow field in the summit crater. Uh, here's the important part here, I suppose. The tilt meter recorded more than seven microradians of deflationary tilt during episode seven, which was more than twice the amount recorded during episodes five and six. As episode seven ended, there was a rapid change in tilt from deflation to inflation. So we've got more magma coming up into the system, along with the decrease in seismic tremor. And we've recorded just under five microradians of tilt since the end of episode seven. Uh, and so if we come down here now to the analysis part where they actually kind of uh, make some projections on the whole thing. Um, episode seven began after recovering only three microradians of tilt, the amount lost during episode six. More than seven microradians of deflationary tilt were lost during episode seven. The eruption may therefore resume when approximately seven microradians of tilt are recovered. So again, just using some simple estimates here, um, thinking that that's, that seven microradians is sort of the pressure threshold. So they've already recorded about five microradians as of yesterday, since the end of episode seven. Um, the rate of inflationary tilt is about two microradians per day. If this continues, we could begin another eruption sometime between either January 31st, which is today, to February 3rd. So there's the big takeaway there, <clears throat> is we're in that window where this next episode uh, is likely to occur. Of course, right now with the summit kind of socked in with the weather, you wouldn't be able to see that on the webcam. So hopefully it, it waits a bit until we get uh, better weather and people can actually see the eruption. Looking at the monitoring data, earthquake are very low, just you know, very s small amounts of quake across the whole volcano. Um, you can see that here going after the tw after episode seven ended, earthquakes dropping down to you know 10 or so, a dozen earthquakes per day. Um, and then here's the real data that's been the most helpful is we've got these uh, cycles on the tilt meter. So there's episode seven right there, that eruption. So the deflationary tilt during the eruption. Since that time, we've seen the inflation continue. And so we're waiting to get to this threshold right here. And again, this is data from, actually this data is actually current. This is up to date. So a little bit more inflationary tilt would seem to be necessitated to hit this threshold, which was pretty much the same as the episode six uh, threshold as well. So might be looking at a day or two for episode eight uh, begins based on the data here. And then to finish out, just a, a couple of fun videos USGS put out. This is the episode seven, just a time lapse. So here we are the night of the 27th, the eruption from that vent on the west side, lava pouring and pooling across the crater floor. <clears throat> uh, that, that going on for what was it, like 16 hours. Uh, so that eruption and the lava fountaining went on for a good 16 or so hours before it started to die down. So now we're on to January 28th, early in the morning, 2.30 in the morning. You see the lava flows just creeping across the crater floor. Uh, and then let's see if the time lapse ends or if they just, yeah, so the time lapse takes us to about 6 a.m. Uh, that morning. So, and then later that day is when that episode actually ended. Um, let's see a couple things here. These are just from the latest batch of photos that the USGS took. So some of their, um, some of the scientists monitoring. So this was during the episode seven eruption with both vents, the north and south vents going off there. Well, that's pretty nice there. And then let's just pick one more maybe, I suppose, just uh, what looks good. This is one looks pretty nice here. This is from the from the webcam, but just a, a nice view of the vent and that flow field out there across the crater floor. So, so we'll keep you posted. Um, you know, obviously I can't get any closer than the rest of the public. So we'll have to see if I'm here when there's also an eruption going on. Um, 
drones are not allowed in the national park so my ability to you know acquire great footage or really something special is somewhat hampered but i can at least provide you with some information and i'll do what i can um, to keep you informed um, hopefully everyone's doing well and uh, we'll see how this plays out with the hopefully the storms in both locations uh, end soon dissipates people are safe uh, and then we can get back to kind of looking at these volcanoes and see when they might erupt next so thanks for your time and patience today while i'm doing this remotely from a hotel room uh, be well and we'll see you next time take care